Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Chris, the Mike Guy. And have you ever popped into somebody's stream or watched a YouTube video and just noticed they had that perfect audio level when you were listening to it and you wanted to understand how to get that beautiful microphone sound so that way you stand above all the rest of the audio in your videos? Well, today we're gonna do a quick tip here on how I set up my gain levels before each YouTube video stream and you guys can understand exactly what that process is so you can try to apply it to your content. Before we get too far into this video here today, I did just want to thank all of my current patrons and Twitch subscribers. It's because of individuals like you that I'm able to get gear and provide content like this for the rest of the YouTube community and for those that watch me on my Twitch channel. Meaning for those of you that don't follow me on Twitch or Twitter, please take a look at the links in the description of this video. All my social profiles are included down there. We also have an awesome Discord that we do a lot of sharing ideas and just providing excellent uh, tech tips and everything for everybody in there. If you guys wanna join that as well, again, links in the description. Please come check us out there. Let's move on with the rest of the video. So the first thing we're gonna have to do here today is go get a third party piece of software called Audacity. For those of you who don't know what Audacity is, it is a small and portable piece of recording software that's just excellent to use. It's got a lot of backend support, great community around it, but it's just a great little light piece of software that I like to use in order to test out the levels that I'm recording at. So that way I know exactly where my microphone sits and I don't have to rely so much on digital meters or things like that that can be a little inaccurate at times. If you don't already have Audacity, again, link in the description for that software and you guys can go get it now. Go ahead and install it and then we'll get on to the uh, next portion here of the video. Okay, now that I have Audacity opened up here on my desktop and you guys can see that in the top right here, I'm going to just go ahead and take a quick opportunity to say, to explain kind of the setup here and what exactly we're gonna be working with. We're not actually going to be recording anything here, although if you want to, you can to play back and listen to if you wanna kind of see how the microphone sounds, but we're just gonna be using the recording level metering here with the monitoring section at the top of the window that you guys can see. So first thing, we just need to make sure we're looking at the correct microphone. So in my situation right now, I'm gonna be using aux in for this beginning portion, and then we'll actually go over to the Rode NT to show you actually setting up this for line in for the blue. So right now, on the aux in, I'm just gonna go ahead over here and say click to start monitoring. And you'll see that as I'm talking, what I really, really want to see and where I set my levels at is right there at that minus 12. I want my average level to be right around minus 12. I just find that that's the sweet spot. You have a little headroom if you wanna get a little bit loud as you're trying to do something, you know, as you're getting excited or something like that, you have a little bit of headroom to give, but minus 12 is just that perfect sweet spot for me. It doesn't get into clipping range very often, and you can just talk at a normal level and understand, you know, and, and still be heard over the rest of your audio. Speaking of those negative levels, that stands for minus dB. In sense of game audio, or if I'm streaming and I'm having applications play, I like to have those around minus 20. And then for background audio, I'll do anywhere between minus 45 and minus 30, depending on how loud I actually want that audio to be. So just take note of that when you're doing this, you can also apply the same solution to other software such as that to try to see exactly how loud it's playing and you can understand where it's sitting at. So now I've gone ahead and pulled down the Rode NT1. I have the AT8035 here. I have my mixer on screen with us now here so you can see as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the loading for the Rode NT1 and show you how that works. Now what I do have is my AT8035 is currently on channel one, already loaded, ready to go. And typically what I like to do is I like to leave my loading uh, at zero fading when I'm at my optimal, optimal level. And that's kind of just where I like to keep it at. You'll see on my mixing board, it's only going up to minus 20 on the mixing board. It doesn't jump all the way up to zero like a lot of people say it should. I've never been able to get that to effectively go to zero for any reason. So minus 20 is where I sit, but it, obviously it still works great for you guys and how you're hearing it. So I'm not too concerned with that. Uh, my main mix is at zero as well. I just like having it clean there so that way I have some room for adjustment as I'm going back and forth. Now I'm going to turn on this monitoring again for Audacity and you're gonna see that only the left channel is currently running when I'm talking and that is because the AT8035 is currently loaded on the left channel. The Rode NT1 will be loaded on the right 
it's just how I have this set up right now. I'll do it mono and things like that, but that's just kind of how I have to operate this at the moment. So deal with that part. So first thing I'm gonna do with the Rode NT1 is make sure everything is zeroed out before I get started. Uh, my panning is all the way right, but everything else should be zeroed out. Compression, all my EQs, my FX is turned off because I don't wanna be sending that signal. All my gain and everything is off. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna set the fader to zero. We're gonna get a small amount of level there. You see we're already at that minus 30 point because zero on the uh, gain at the top here is plus 10 when the 48 volts is turned on. So we're getting a little bit of power to the NT1 already, but what we need to do is just give it that little bit more to bring it up to our minus 12 level. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn this little black knob and keep talking until our NT1 gets about the exact same level as our AT8035. Now you'll see that they're both talking right about the same, and I'm gonna do a quick little talking scenario where we're gonna go back and forth between the two microphones, and you might notice a big quality difference because I'm so much closer to the NT1, and it's, it's a beautiful microphone, so you'll get that, but you shouldn't see a big volume difference between the AT8035 and the NT1 itself. And now I'm gonna turn off this AT8035 and we're just gonna go ahead and talk through the NT1 for the rest of the video here. And I just wanna say guys, it is a really, really simple solution when you think about it and when you've learned how to work with the audio and make it work to your benefit. So I hope this little quick tip worked for you guys. If you have a single fading solution where you don't have a fader plus gain staging, you can actually do this same trick with the, uh, with the single gain knob on like a Scarlet Solo or 2i2 or something else that doesn't have separate faders per channel and it works just as well. So take that solution, add it to your content, see if it works for you and let me know exactly what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, all that fun stuff as well. I hope you guys check out other videos on this channel, lots of playlists, lots of content. Other than that, my name's Chris, the Mike Guy. We will check you all next time.